the 128th get together. Actually the road team has the advantage in this case Georgia leads the all time series by seven victories. The whole city has been cranked up since Thursday. Now it's time to play ball. And Auburn will bring it out to the 25 yard line. Peyton Thorne, there he is, number one, as Gary talked about, the transfer from Michigan State as we take a look at our Papa John's lineups. Peyton out of Neighborville, Illinois. Great stats, really, at Michigan State. Did such a fine job. He struggled a little bit here so far at Auburn. And the rest of the offense joining him. And a nice guy to have in your backfield is Jarquez Hunter, a preseason first team SEC performer. And that's who's with him in the backfield on the first snap of the game from the 25. And now Quez will empty that backfield. Going to throw it out in the flat to Jay Fair. And Fair got it out around the 29-yard line against the Georgia defense that Jenny talked about. And it looks like this. Tyke Smith. What a great start to the season. He's already got three interceptions, which is actually tied with Jalen Simpson of Auburn for the top tops in the country in that category. Fairweather a big target at tight end shifting over to the right side. They're loaded that way on second and seven. Jarquez going to get wrapped up and he's going to lose a couple. So something that might help this Georgia defense. Javon Bullard is back in that lineup. MVP of the semifinal and national championship game. He's the quarterback back there. Emotional leader and a terrific football player. Yes, he is. And Kirby told us yesterday. Confidence wise just having him in there is going to make the defense that much better. So a third down and nine for the Tigers. They're only 39 percent. On the year so far. And what did they want to avoid. Third and long. Right. What do they got third and third long. Three receivers to Thorns left. He's looking that way. He's not going to get a chance to go that way. You gotta throw the ball. I mean, they've had seven sacks a week ago. And when we watch practice all day Thursday, the only thing Hugh Freeze said over and over, and I can tell you when he said it, get rid of it. Get right. rid of it. Get rid of it. He must have said it 50 times. Xavier Story and Michael Williams in there to drop the quarterback. Even an incomplete pass is better than a sack early in this game. The team is down about that, and then you get a sack first third and long. Kyle Muse is going to let this go out of bounds around the 32 yard line. And that will bring Carson back. And the Papa John's Georgia offense. Carson Beck off to a good start. Six touchdown passes, almost 1,200 yards in the air. But as we talked about, hostile environment for the first time. Georgia's first four games were all at home in Athens. John Edwards in the backfield with Beck from the 32. Brock Bowers switches sides. And it's Dejan, and he's going to be dropped for a loss of one. Nice surge by Marcus Harris. Along with Jalen McLeod on the Georgia offense. Marcus Rosamy, Jack Saint, become more of a threat as a downfield receiver. And Georgia with a second down and 11. Bowers now joins Beck in the backfield. He has been a ball carrier at times this year and last year. Back to throw. Going to flare it out to Bowers. Got a blocker in front. Trying to run over a guy over there and can't quite do it. I think it might have been Kane Lee or was it Simpson? Well, if you're going to go against this Georgia offense, the one guy you have to corral is Bowers after the catch. 80% of his receiving yards are after the catch. Yards after the catch, mandatory. Good play by that Auburn defense. So Georgia with a third down and nine, and we'll hear the noise on Carson Beck. 
As time delivers a strike, first down, Lad McConkey. Yeah, his first of, catch of the year. Look at the difference right there. What that Georgia offensive line gave Carson Beck. Opportunity to get it to 84, but plenty of time to find him. I don't know who feels better about that, McConkey, Kirby Smart, or Carson Beck. But that's Lad's first catch of the year, and now back on the ground at Ajon Edwards. Or about a million Georgia fans. Yeah, that's true. The game. <laughs> a good point. Asante with a tackle on Dejon Edwards. So this reworked offensive line, early injury of the right tackle. Mims is forced to switching or putting Truss at right tackle and Fairchild in for the left guard spot. So far holding up well. Fairchild wearing Kevin Willox number 77 today in honor of their fallen teammate. Dejon Edwards. Off the left sides gets into Auburn territory at about the 48 where Marcus Harris makes another stop for the defense of Auburn and Eugene Asante leads the team in tackles and they had a 67 yard fumble return for their only touchdown last week. Trying to pack it in there and Auburn says on uh -uh, is Harris again. I don't think Kirby will be tempted to do this with the way Auburn's offense is moving the ball. I wouldn't give him any life early. I'd punt here. And he's going to. The fourth down at two. Georgia will kick it. And that will bring out Brett Thorson. Thorson, all SEC freshman a year ago from the punting positions. You look behind him. Yeah, and, and confusion on how many players were on the field for Auburn. Cannot afford to make a mistake. Worth time burning a game. timeout here. And they burn that timeout just five minutes into the game. At the 50 yard line, they did have 12 men on the field. And we almost had a coach laying on the field <laughs> as Hugh was moving to call timeout. The 12th player almost ran him over a la Jimbo Fisher a week ago. Yeah, right. So now Thorson set to kick. And Coy Moore stands back around the 10 yard line for Auburn. Just gets out of the way. Thorson oh, trying to perfect. drop it inside perfect. the 10 and does around the six. And with an offense that's struggling, that's a perfect punt for George. Sure is. So Thorson does his job and pins Auburn in a hole. Stay in the know with CBS Sports HQ, a 24 7 free network that brings you the latest news, picks, scores, and highlights from all the sports you love. Watch CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. And I'm going to join the HQ team after our game. I'm going to go try to find and watch them afterwards. I think you, you should. Yes, yeah. Or you could just sit in the booth and listen to me. Oh, that'll, That'd be a that first. <laughs> Straight up the middle for a couple for Jarquez Hunter. Auburn's struggles on offense well documented. Last week against Texas A&M 56 passing yards. Auburn hasn't had a hundred yard passing game against a power five team. The last five power five teams they played. That's not good. And amazingly they won two of them. Yes they did. And it's going to be the keeper. And Peyton Thorne down the sideline. One guy to beat. Out of bounds with a huge run. Javon Bullard saved a touchdown. I had to make sure that wasn't number nine running the ball, Robbie Ashford. But what a play to get out of your own zone. And that was a called quarterback keeper the whole way. That wasn't even a read. That was almost a, a quarterback sweep called. What a call by someone for Auburn. A 61 yard romp by the quarterback and all the way to the Georgia 30 yard line. Now the quick throw and that one almost picked off. So there's one of those RPOs and that's the difference that Javon Bullard can make to this defense for Georgia. 
This that is a guy so fast. He closed it extremely quickly. And a big hole it looks like, but Bullard has seen it all. And that's the difference that he can make in a championship defense. Was intended for Fairweather, the tight end, and Bullard on a great break on the ball. Knocks it away, forces second down at 10. And that was an RPO call. Did not call one of those against AM. Fairweather in motion. This time it's Jaquez Hunter got the edge all the way down inside the 20 and about the 17. Well, Jaquez was very effective a year ago running against Georgia. And on this play, it's misjudged by the secondary. Just outruns a puller, does not take the proper angle, and he gets around the corner. Pick up of 13 down to the 17. Last week against AM Ness. When they got into this part of the field, never got inside the 20. No, they didn't get the red zone. But if they got into field goal range, they had penalties that even Law got them out of field goal range. Let's see how they handle it. Well, he's done something they didn't do against a &M. Let's get it inside the 20. And now they're down inside the 15 and driving down to the 12, maybe the 11. And the Georgia defense has been giving up touchdowns in the red zone. Yes, they have. Uncharacteristic. But there you see it, 114th in the country. So that defense that Jenny talked about wanting to strap it up today and come to life and they've given up a couple explosive plays here. This time not so much. George is saying they got the ball out but it's going to be blown dead. So here we go now third down. Auburn's 12 out of 15 in the red zone this year, 10 of those touchdowns. And we told you about the red zone defense of Georgia. This is when Georgia's defense brings in their pass rushing look. They go three down linemen a lot, and they come from every different angle. It was a lot closer to a fumble than we thought on the first time, but his rear end was down when the ball came out. So third down at four. But you don't want some negative play here or a penalty. Another timeout. You can tell the importance of the start of this game. Georgia has been a slow starting team in the first, first quarter. Auburn wants to take advantage of it. They believe that this is the time they need to score. We'll see if they do when we come back. It wasn't 12 men on the field. This time it was not enough men on the line of scrimmage. And it, you tried to do it. You're trying to get this guy on the line of scrimmage. You get some advice from the booth that we're not in the proper formation. He doesn't want to take a chance with the play clock. The booth can help the head coach. Notre Dame can attest to that. <laughs> Jack was not going to get to the first down. Mark. Now the question for Hugh Freeze, how confident is he to go for the first down or does he kick the field goal? He's Going to go for three. Dumas Johnson made the stop to prevent the first down on Hunter. So that's a win for the Georgia defense. Boy, big time. A great play by Bullard to knock down a pass, then a great sweep, and then all of a sudden it stalls out. Alex McPherson, so far so good. Three for three on the year. This will be a 27 yard field goal attempt to try to put the Tigers on the board first. And it is perfect. Don't you think that? That play call third and four. I almost thought when they ran it, they were going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah. They settled for three. Great run, though, that covered 82 yards all on the ground, including 61 by the quarterback. And the field goal gives Auburn the lead. The country, what do you think? Yeah, you know, Ness, I was thinking about that during the break. You might say he showed a lack of confidence in his offense. I think it's just the opposite. He feels his offense has a lack of confidence, and he doesn't want to have something bad happen early in the game, like stopping him on fourth down. Hakeem Muse on the kick return from the 10, and he gets it out around the 30. Kirby Smarts. 85 and 15 over his first hundred games. That is pretty Offside, impressive. Picking team number 27. The five-yard penalty is added to the end of the play. 
first down Georgia. And of course two national titles back to back trying to make it a three peat this year. So that'll move it out around the 34 yard line with the penalty on the offsides and the kicking team. So Georgia good starting field position. First drive and then had the first drive and then had to punt it away. Let's see what they do with Carson Beck and company on their second offensive series. Back up play fake deep middle just over the outstretched arms of Oscar Delt the tight end. Give a little bit of a nod to this to Brock Bowers because two players go with Bowers on the play leaving Delt man to man on the inside linebacker could not draw up a better play than this for Mike Bobo. You've got your tight end on an inside linebacker for a touchdown overthrown. He's had a couple of those this year. That one forces second down and ten. Back again down the middle. This might one be might be intercepted. Yep. Battle for possession. No indication yet. Remember, simultaneous catch goes to the offense. And the officials haven't given us any word yet. The umpire is there. The back judge is there. And nobody wants to point in either direction. Simultaneous goes to the offense. What are they going to call it? it was Jalen Simpson who was in there would oh. have been his fourth interception They're in the huddling year. Huddling up. It appears that it was wrestled away on the ground. Simpson was upset that he had the ball, he has and then it, it was hands. taken away from him. And once they got to the ground. That looks like an interception. I would yeah. agree with Jalen Simpson. An interception by the defense. First down. Yeah. His fourth of the year. And a great play on the ball. Jalen Simpson's got it back to the Tigers. Might be a little dance on the sideline when he gets there. How about the back-to-back -back throws for Carson Beck? Misses a touchdown, then he gets an interception. Papa John plays on the road. First time start for Carson Beck. Right up the seam. Perfect touchdown here. This is going to score. You see the safety running away from it. He'll never even see the play overthrown. He come back on the very next pass. And Simpson is, oh, there he is right there, is going to jump on the crossing route. Bang! He reads it just like Bullard did when he knocked down the pass, only he gets the interception. Great play. Brunswick, Georgia native Jalen Simpson, his fourth interception of the year, leading the country in that capacity now. Because you have a play here that he's been saving, because this is the time you'd use it. Batie in the backfield. And here comes Georgia's heat. And down goes Thorne. Tyke Smith that time coming off the edge. Tyke Smith having a tremendous season in the first month for Georgia. Coming right off the edge. You should be accounting for him if you're a quarterback. You got to know that you're under danger if he comes. You got to get rid of that ball. Again, Peyton is a veteran quarterback in a new system let's just say that yeah. okay so he's learning on the go as we as well Georgia's second sack of the first quarter brings up second down at 15. Jay Fair the motion man gonna flare it out in the flat to the tailback but T got a positive game still gonna be third down Transferred from Michigan State. 49 touchdown passes for the Spartans. Six total touchdowns so far through the first month of the season for Auburn. And a third and long. Georgia shifting on their defensive front as they so often do. Six men come. And Thorne got away from it. And now decides he has to run. Oh, a big hit on the sideline. Better not have stepped out of bounds, or Javon Bull is going to get a call for an unnecessary roughness. 
And he becomes kind of running a back right and go. there. Does he get his foot out of bounds? No. Ooh. Ooh. It's almost a horse collar as well. Yep. A lot of things could have happened there. Horse collar. And then Bullard goes very low. Legal hit, though. It was just whether his foot was on the line. And fourth down and two. Interesting call here. They didn't go on fourth down and two in the red zone. They're going on fourth down and two from the 40. They're going to run that quarterback keep. And he's got the edge and he's got the first down. That's the same play he ran earlier. Same exact play off the goal line. He gained 61 yards last time he ran it. But these two yards are just as important. Exactly. I was going to say. Got it to the 35 yard line. So 67 yards of their 74 total yards, courtesy of number one. Jarquez Hunter back in the backfield, high snap. Jarquez, not much, maybe a yard. Michael Williams pulling on his leg out of the pile of Georgia defenders. So as Hughes Freeze has come in here, and there's a bunch, we'd be easier for Brad and I to tell you when somebody makes a play that, that is not a transfer in here. <laughs> but that offensive line is a work in progress. Three transfers in one junior college, four first year players in that offensive line. Yeah, we started using different color magic markers for transfers, and Gary and I decided we had a very colorful board. Yes. <laughs> Second down and eight. Let's see if they can give their quarterback some time here. Quick throw and a wheel route. Incomplete. Broken up. Auburn fans looking for a flag, and there it is. Jalen Everett. Let's see what happens here. Ball's in the air. Good things can happen to an offense when you're throwing the ball and getting rid of it. Watch Peyton Thorne. He knows he's going to get pressure. This is what they've been telling him all week. Get the ball Defense, out. Look what happens. He gets the ball out, and something good can happen. Interference, automatic first down. Hooks was the intended receiver. He was hesitating a, a week ago. Yeah. You know? And it's just that little bit of hesitation. You know, it's not going to always be pretty. They're not going to always be wide open. But get it out of your hands. Back in the red zone of the 19 now for Auburn. Already leading by a field goal. Hunter, big opening off the left side. Down to the four-yard line, first and goal. Malachi Starks brought him down. He almost scored. Well, Dylan Wade and Gunnar Britton, number, the left guard and left tackle. Watch these two guys do their job. That is a, something you do not see very often against this Georgia defense. Go right back to him, and he's in the end zone. Hunter, touchdown, Auburn. And as Georgia has struggled with slow starts, they got another one going here today. They had one against South Carolina that we saw a couple of weeks ago, and the same thing happening on the road. Five-yard touchdown for Jarquez Hunter, his second score of the year. McPherson's extra point is good. It's early, but it's a little bit shocking to the number one team in the country. 48-yard drive after the interception by Beck. Took him seven plays. Jarquez Hunter from five yards out. 10-0 Tigers. Now this crowd is into it so is the Auburn sideline and why not with two minutes remaining in the first quarter they're leading the number one team in the country 10 nothing remember six years ago Georgia came in here number one and they didn't lead number one This one from the three-yard line, Muse. He's been a good return man, both as a kickoff and a punt returner. He's got another good one going. So 
So Makai Muse with a big kickoff yeah, return. When you go watch practice, you're kind of amazed at this guy. Not that he's just short, but his body type is stocky. But he runs. I mean, he was a not recruited athlete. Walk on. Pretty good success at Georgia with walk ons. Yeah, right? no doubt. The only offer he had was from a Division three school and comes to Georgia, and he's been their top return guy. 41 yard kickoff return sets Georgia up. The 44. And Dejon Edwards tough run. Remember leading to that score by Auburn that all started with the interception the fourth of the year by Jalen Simpson and I know Jenny you spent some time with him this week. Yeah the man loves to dance coach freeze told him if you have a big play don't celebrate on the field let's avoid a penalty come over to the sideline I'll do a little dance with you so after week one. Jalen gave coach a five out of ten but they have been practicing their dance moves so hopefully we'll be able to see it later in this game guys. <laughs> it sure was a big play the biggest one of the first quarter so far Brock Bowers got a first down as Larry Nixon runs him out of bounds. Interesting Auburn the way they're going to treat Bach Bowers when he's attached to the line of scrimmage they treat him as a tight end if he splits out they're going to count him as a wide receiver. Back on a slant. Nice throw. Just short of the first down to Dylan Bell. This will be noted by Mike Bobo. Watch Bowers on the wheel route on this case. He is open. This is where he's dangerous. You match up as a tight end against a linebacker, and he makes people pay for that matchup. Here's what Gary's talking about. He'd still be running. Kendall Milton has checked in. He's been banged up somewhat through the first month of the season. Lad McConkey's in there as well. Those two guys limited duty so far at the beginning of the season. Back bootleg. Why well, you had to get rid of it in a hurry. Did a great job of getting rid of that football, saving 10 yards. And that was Elijah McAllister, who was coming in a hurry, a Vanderbilt transfer. Coming from the right side, right there. All six foot five and a half of them. He is long and intelligent. Working on his doctorate after leaving Vandy and coming to Auburn. He said the atmosphere is a little bit different here. I'd say. Third down and two. Powers sets up in the backfield. He'll get the call. And the first down. How about that? That looked like it was going to be a loss of a yard, and he just bulldozed his way with the offensive line to pick up the first down. We talked about it. They throw him the ball. He blocks and now he runs from the backfield. Did it a few times before. We've seen it, but key fourth down play. They went to their playmaker. So that'll end quarter number one. If you're just joining us, surprise, surprise. Aria made a perfect landing in the pregame. So far, so did Jacquez Hunter in the end zone. 10 0 at the end of one. Quarter number two at Jordan Hare Stadium, where Auburn. Controlled the first 15 minutes and leads 10 nothing Georgia on offense here in the first snap Dylan Bell around the edge and Bell's got a first down and then some Just moments ago Jenny talked with you freeze Coach you're up 10 zip you got this huge interception out there. How does this team continue to be a force? Well, I mean, I knew we were going to play hard. It's hard not to when you're in front of a packed Jordan Hare Stadium. You know, it's a, it's a great atmosphere to play in. Our kids love this rivalry, and uh, they'll play for 60 minutes. We've had a good first quarter. we got three more of them. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Dylan Bell again on the carry. After a 14 yard pickup, he gets five more. And Georgia at the 13. Second down at five. The slow starts by the Bulldogs seemingly all season has bitten them again here at Auburn so far. Rosalie Jack saying a motion and hitting the backfield and a loss of two or three is Dejon Edwards and it's Nehemiah Pritchett. It's obvious that you want to stop the opponent's running game. But it's even more important against Georgia because off of that rushing attack, what they do so well is their play action pass game. If you can control the running game, and they've done it so far in this game, it forces Georgia into a drop back passing game. That was DJ James, I beg your pardon, on the tackle and the loss. 
Forcing a third down and seven. Now let's see if Auburn can put some pressure on the quarterback, or do they need help by blitzing? Let's see if Carson Beck's going to stay under center. No, he just came up to talk to his offensive line. Does he come? Third and seven. Got hit as he threw, but caught. Ra Ra Thomas, who had a big game against Auburn last year in a different uniform, a juggling catch Eugene to keep the drive alive. Sorry, now a Eugene Asante, number nine, hits it full speed, but Carson Beck makes a wonderful play. He could feel that linebacker coming right at him, and he delivers an on-target throw for the first down. And Ra Ra just stayed with it, juggled it to himself, and has it first and goal. Huge play. That should take the pressure off Carson Beck. We'll feel it tomorrow, but not right now. <laughs> From the five. Dejon Edwards driving down around the two before he's pushed back. Cam Riley in on the stop. Fourth time under Kirby Smart ever trailing by yards. 10 or more after the first quarter. And the other ones didn't go so well. As Kirby said a couple of weeks ago to Jenny, moment by moment, can't get it all back in one play. They can get part of it back here from the two-yard line. Edwards, and he's in. Touchdown, Georgia. That's what Edwards does so well. Runs through tackles. I thought Larry Nixon, number 30, had him for no gain. Watch him run right through the tackle. Kirby says he's slithery. That was a good slither. Yep. Exactly what he did. So Georgia goes 56 yards in 11 plays. A little over five minutes to close the gap to three. Pending Peyton Woodings extra point. Woodring the freshman. And up and good. So 11.49. Sooner or later, you're going to come to third down, and you've got to stand in there and make the play, and Carson Beck does. Great grab by Thomas, and then they go to their playmaker. Edwards takes it, runs through a tackle, and his best set slithered in for the touchdown. Rivalry, but all week the coaches have been talking about it's not about hate, it's about mutual respect. Well, I think Asante and Carson Beck just exemplified that after that big hit. Absolutely. That's how you win over your team. That's a bust by the offensive line or the running back. You never allow the middle linebacker to be on block. That's always accounted for. So the quarterback saved him, and believe me, his teammates will notice that oh, yeah. going forward. Yep. Might not know it right now, but when they watch the tapes, they will look and say, that's our guy. Absolutely. Let's send it back to Adam Zucker, our New York studio, for a Jeep update. Zuck? Yeah, Ness, here's a weird one. Two undefeateds, all right? Texas and Kansas. The Longhorns like Auburn. They were out to a 10-0 lead. Here comes Jason Bean for Kansas. Their starter, Jalen Daniels, already out. He gets hit. It goes right to Daniel Hyshaw on the fumble for a Jayhawks touchdown. It's now 10-7. Remember, Kansas with a huge upset at Texas a couple years ago. Wow. It's a lot of practice time to be able to do that on those tackles. Am I not mistaken? Is that the first time those two have ever played when they're both ranked at the same time? Here's Peyton Thorne on a keeper, and that's going back to the line of scrimmage, and that's just about it as Malachi Starks let him have it. There's no, there's no safety in the country that's playing better than Malachi Starks. He's gotten comfortable back there. He reads pass and run fast, and he's a sure tackler. No gain on that one. Second down and 10. Empty backfield for the time being. And now they'll switch things up, bring the tight end. Luke Deal in close. Coy Moore into the slot. And here comes that T into the backfield. So a lot of shifting for Auburn. And they're going to throw it out to that T out in the flat. Nice play. Got about six or seven. Julian Humphrey knocked him out of bounds. That brings up third down. 
Third down, but a manageable third down. Thanks to staying ahead of the sticks a little bit. Third down and three with Jarquez Hunter back in the Auburn backfield. This is where your offense first downs helps your defense staying on the field. Fairweather the tight end in motion. Hunter. He got it. Well, well, going to be close. Was short. So three and outs with a defense that's just given up a big drive. This is tough. This is a big run right here. It's just short of the line. About two feet short. And this is where, as we saw a week ago in our oh, Iowa oh, Penn State oh, game, oh. it starts to mount up if you're not careful with these three and outs as an offense. They'll bring out the punting unit. It's Oscar Chapman. Preseason all SEC punter. Kai Muse is going to call for the fair catch immediately and field it around the 20 yard line. Georgia went punch safe there. They were playing for the fake. They just wanted the ball. And they've got it. But they're down three. Their offense back on the field when we come back. Presented by T Mobile 5G Home Internet. Talk about stars involved here. Charles Barkley, Chuck had a chance to see him this morning briefly. Hall of Famer, Frank Thomas, great Auburn baseball player, two-time American League MVP, Heisman Trophy winner Cam Newton in the house, and also honoring the 83 SEC championship team from 40 years ago under Coach Dye. Did uh, Chuck look upset there? The other guy was eating popcorn and he wasn't. He run that. <laughs> well, he's slimmed down a lot. I know. I if, if he's eating popcorn, there's not butter yeah, on it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It just didn't look happy. <laughs> and Dylan Bell. Well, you know, we've all been on diets, right, Ness? I mean, Takiyo Spikes. Oh, it's Takiyo Spikes. Yeah, I didn't see that. Look yeah. at Charles. He's going to. I don't get to eat popcorn I anymore. Don't, I don't get it. <laughs> He slimmed down though. Oh my goodness. I know. If he ever. I saw him in the lobby and I had to take a double take. Yeah. I gave him the old bro hug and my arms went all the way around. <laughs> Second down and four. Dejan Edwards sidesteps, first down, quite a bit more. I asked Kirby, what makes Dejan so good? He said vision. Vision. Yeah. I think it's more than that. You know, he's a 4 6 guy. I think he just understands football. He can feel the flow, understands the angles of how they're going to try to tackle him. He just gets the game. And he gets almost five more right there. It's always good to have your offensive line and your tight end helping you along the way. Well, he's not Darnell Washington, but he's a willing blocker. And the NFL will notice that. A guy who can stretch the field as a tight end and willing to block when he has to. Just a matter of time before they go back to number 19 in some form or fashion. So now he shifts out. He breaks that core that Gary talked about, so he's a wideout according to Auburn's defense right now. Over the middle. First down, Dominique Lovett. Lovett came into this one with 17 catches, his 18th on the year right there. This is a quarterback decision right here. He can go to Dylan at the top or throw the slant at the bottom. His choice when he comes out, Carson Beck. Bell now on the ground for about four as Georgia's back in Auburn territory with just under eight minutes remaining in the half. Dylan Bell is one of the Debo Samuel position here right now for right. this Georgia offense. There's a quarterback comparison. And of course, all the rushing yards on Peyton Thorne's side, courtesy of a 61 yarder in the first quarter. He's staying in the shade for now while his defense is on the field. Second down and eight, that's Bowers in motion. Sets up to the bottom of your screen. Back throwing. What a catch. Throw and catch Rosamie Jack Saint. That had to be right on the money. And Again, it was. When you've got a great player and you know the other defense is looking for him, you use him this time. Look at the defense. Two guys on Bowers. There's the open throw behind him. Second time in this game that that's happened. 26 yard pickup. Remember the Oscar Delp? 
pass yep. that they missed early. Same thing. Two Auburn players goes for 19. You throw it right behind them. Good job by Rosamick Jack St. Just getting those hands out there in time against Zion Puckett. One of his best receptions of the year so far for the first down that he signals. Now it's second down after no gain on the running play. Cash Jones checks in to the Georgia backfield. Second down and 10 from the 19. They fake the pitch to Jones. Back to the end zone. Whoa. Broken up. Bowers, the intended receiver, had his hands on it. And Zion Puckett popped it out of there. Yeah, and that's more than a 50-50 ball when you're going to Bowers back there. So Puckett did a great job. That's a tough matchup. Six foot four, big body, well thrown, and Puckett fights it just enough. Great job. Third down at 10. Back to the end zone. Broken up again. Again, it was Bowers. And this time, Jalen Simpson's in the mix. And there's his dance that Jenny was talking about. Fourth down. So this was a perfectly thrown ball, but for the second play play, second straight play, let me try to say it correctly this time, a wonderful defensive play saves the deal. So Peyton Woodring coming out to try to tie the game up. I thought Muse was going to catch that for a bounce touchdown. Oh, it was close. Yes. This will be a 37-yard attempt. For the freshman to try to tie the game. Kick on the way, and he's got it. Peyton Woodring. 37-yard field goal, and with just under six minutes, Remaining in the half, we got a tie game. Watch the ricochet almost. Makai Muse almost ends up with it on the left side. Oh, it bounced real quick. <laughs> Had no chance. I didn't see the bounce. 61-yard drive for Georgia in 10 plays. They get a field goal to tie us up. Georgia with a slow start. The second quarter is theirs so far with 10 points to tie the game. Here with just under six minutes remaining in the second quarter. And this one will be run back by Batty. And he's got a crease. And he's down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at about the 44. Or he might have been gone. Nice return. So Makai Muse had the big return that set up Georgia. This time... Petit is going to set up this Auburn offense in position to call anything they want to here and get this offense restarted. Brian came in averaging 25 yards of return. He got 39 on that one. And he'll stay in at the tailback spot. Peyton Thorne has yet to throw it to Fairweather, who's a tight end that can give you some headaches. As far as matchups, that's him in motion right now. And the quarterback keep goes to the line of scrimmage and nowhere else. Walthour that time, number 90, the defensive end, defensive tackle type player. A great job sorting out who had the ball. He looks at the ride to the running back. Watch him right here. Just play out his assignment. What do I got? What do I got? Who's got it? It's the quarterback. Great eyes defensively by Walthour. One of those veterans that plays a little bit more every year behind some of those guys that went to the NFL. And now it's his time to shine. They'll give Peyton Thorne a yard, second and nine. And he had to sidestep the rush that time. And now he went over the line of scrimmage and then back behind it to make that throw. To Camden Brown. I didn't think you could do that. Uh, we have to ask Gene about that. I didn't think. Let's see if he did cross the line of scrimmage. He's over it right there yeah, by I, almost I thought a you yard. Could not, I don't know if that's revealed. When I, I did not think you could do that. Gene, what's the call on that? That's an illegal forward pass, guys. A full body, both feet, and ball beyond the line. Illegal forward pass. Well, 
They, everybody missed it then except us. Thanks, Gene. Is that reviewable, Gene? Yeah, I believe it is, Gary. If they would call timeout and look at that, the position of the quarterback would be reviewable, yes. So as Ness called it, he went over the line, then he came back and threw the ball, so that's a miss on the replay official. It's a miss on somebody. Anyway, it's second down and 10, and they went in a hurry, and there wasn't a lot of time in between plays, so no review. But he's allowed to stop it, right, if it's close? I mean... That team got the edge. What a play by Petit here. First of all, the blocking's good enough to get the edge, but watch him freeze Javon Bullard on this play. When he gets the edge number one, good job. Stutz gets a great block. Now he freezes Bullard and Boy, gets the extra yard. Pretty yes. juke out there and part of a 17-yard run. So this has been the Brian Petit drive so far for Auburn. Transfer from South Florida. He is doing the job. Here he is again and still trying to spin away. I got a yard and a half. Auburn remember used two timeouts in about the first 10 minutes of the game so they have only one timeout remaining. I think they were both smartly used. Yeah. And by the way on the last third and 10 they were lucky with the substitution. They had 12 men on the field almost again would have been a disaster. Marquez Hunter back with Peyton Thorne will get the carry. Looking for a block. Got it. Hunter. First down, Auburn. Well, we've seen Jack West Hunter for a couple of years now. This guy is an SEC back. The one thing we don't talk about with running backs, how tall they are. It doesn't matter. If you can stop and cut and deliver blows like that, you could play in the SEC. Wholesale changes now for this offensive formation for Auburn. Georgia changing up some personnel as well. Yeah, Robbie. Is Robbie Ashford. That's wholesale, right? Yep. That's about as wholesale as you can get. He adds the dimension of great wheels and tremendous speed. And talking with Kirby Smart, he let us know, I'm very nervous when number nine comes in because of how he played against Georgia last year. And here he goes. Ashford to the edge. Picks up about six. Nice job by one of the four tight ends that play in this game for Auburn. Brandon Frazier, number 87, comes across the formation and handles the edge man this time against Dumas Johnson to get the edge. Successful first down play. Got it to the 16. Second down and five. Remember the last time Auburn was in the red zone, they stalled. Might be the reason they've gone to Robbie Ashford here. Now they got a full house backfield. Ashford high snap gets it to Hunter. And Jarquez still driving backwards. He's only about a yard shy of the first down. Right now, Hugh Freeze is going to decide whether he has four downs or three downs. Third down call. I think he has to make up his mind right now if I'm going to go for it on fourth down. Peyton Thorne comes back in on third down and one. Remember, he's not maybe as dynamic a rusher as Ashford, but he's very capable. We saw that early in the first quarter. Out of the pistol set. Extra t blacker and tight end in there. And Hunter, I don't, I don't think so. It is a big pile up. But well, it's going to be a yard shot. I agreed with the first drive going field goal. I think they got to go for it here on this one. You want to knock off the number one team? It's a ball game stuffed by this Georgia defensive line, but I agree with this call. Not sure I love shotgun back to back plays, but. Two. High snap. Hunter didn't get it. Yep. Back to back plays, third and one shotgun, and it was stuffed. Javon Dumas Johnson in there along with Zion Logue. Georgia will take over on downs. And I think the snap had something to do with it. It forced Jacquez to go wider than he wanted to. They wanted to run the ball over the center. He had to go a hole wider and nothing. Dumas Johnson, great play to submarine everything. And Georgia stops a fourth and one. And they'll take over on offense in a tie game. Sometimes the guy that makes the tackle isn't the guy that made the play. This time, Luke Deal has Chaz Chambliss. Watch him set up 
the play and get inside Luke Deal's block and really discomply the high snap. Chaz Chambliss comes in, forces it to go wider than Albert wanted to, and killed by Jamon Dumas Johnson. So Georgia with the biggest defensive play of the day so far. And they take over at the 13 yard line. We're going to keep it on the ground. Dejon Edwards for a yard or so. As Jalen McLeod made the stop, Georgia has three timeouts remaining. And get the ball to start the second half. They need one play to get some room before I think Kirby will allow his quarterback to make some plays downfield. Second down and eight. Ra Ra Thomas to the bottom of your screen. Back to throw, maybe. Got rid of it, incomplete, intended that's what, for Bowers. That's what you're talking about right there. One mistake down here can be a point changer mistake. I think he got his arm hit as he let yeah, this ball go. I think so. Right? Yes, right as he let it go. It was Jalen McLeod and at least altered that throwing motion. Of Carson Beck, and that's third and eight. Georgia breaks the huddle quickly. And now they go back to the ground. Auburn has a timeout. They have one left. They might as well use it, and they do. They force Georgia to punt. So even though Georgia came up with a nice defensive stop, they're still going to have to put their defense back out on the field again. See the second down pass, obviously, since it was incomplete, allowed Auburn with the stop to get the ball back. The punt coming up with 32 seconds remaining in the half. Let's, unless you, excuse me, go for it. Anything else? Just going to say, Drew, has got a punt. <laughs> I, you might say, do they go for the block? I wouldn't. A good return of 10, 12 yards gets you in field goal range. It's Coy Moore waiting for a great punt. Jeez. Way back at the 28 yard line. So Thorson blasts one out of there. With 25 seconds remaining, but Auburn out of timeouts. After a 52 yard punt. There's a look at Jordan Hare's field side and Harry Dog from our AT&T 5G pylon camp. I have to admit, I thought if Auburn was going to be able to score and move the ball against Georgia, they would have to throw more. They've only thrown six passes in this game so far, and they've moved the ball very effectively. So now it's Robbie Ashford. Fakes the run. I mean, fakes the pass, I should say, and runs it and goes out of bounds. Very short gain, if any. Do you think Georgia was at all confused that he didn't throw the ball on that play right there? I don't think they thought no. he was going to throw the ball. I don't ball. think so. <laughs> they saw some number nine and they go, look out for the quarterback draw. I think that's what they were saying. He's a 41% completion percentage guy. He's only thrown 18, 17 passes this year so far. If I'm Auburn, I want to get out of here at halftime 10 10. And that's what they'll look to do. Timeout. Georgia's going to start using their timeouts now. That T drop for a loss by Smile Munden. Nice spill that time again by Chess Chambliss doing his job. And Munden with the tackle for loss. We'll be back in 30 seconds to see what, if anything else, happens. Third and 13 coming up for Auburn from their own 25 yard line and Georgia still has two timeouts left. Nothing happens. This might be the most time we've spent in a 32 <laughs> second span with nothing going nothing on. happening. Well something's going to happen because Auburn most likely will have to punt again. And Georgia will call a timeout. Yep. As Kamari Lassiter made that hit. So all of Auburn's plays for the most part went in the opposite direction. Ten seconds left. And Vesco brings you today's scholar athletes. Cedric Van Pran for Georgia and Elijah McAllister.
for Auburn and Vesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of $1,000 to both Georgia and Auburn's general scholarship funds. Elijah McAllister, I mentioned earlier, working on his doctorate after leaving and coming from Vanderbilt to Auburn. So if you're Auburn right now, you're working on the whole production of this snap. You got to do it all. The snap's got to be good. You got to catch it and kick it quickly. Oscar Chapman came in averaging about 40 yards a punt. So Georgia has put no one back. They're going all out. All 11 players up there for the block. Auburn getting their protection set with Luke Deal, the tight end, right in the middle of that threesome. And no problem. Wow, what a kick. One step. Caught it and punted it down. Nice if it didn't get to the end zone just so he could get the longest punt of his life, maybe. <laughs> Got it at the one yard line. Good job, Oscar. And that brings the half to a close. A 74 yard punt. So we did have something exciting happen in the last 30 seconds. 74 74, no matter how you do it. <laughs> hey, you can't do it any better than this. And his coverage unit got down there, and that baby just started to die. And then tipped, and then at the one-yard line. And there's his reaction. Good job, Oscar Chapman. That's why you're preseason. The Home Depot SHC on CBS. Avi and Harry uh, dancing on the Auburn logo as we head into the third quarter at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Georgia to get the second half kickoff. Tie game, 10-10 between unranked Auburn and the number one Georgia Bulldogs. Alex McPherson's kick. Makai Muse will take it from the five. And he gets it out across the 25 as we welcome you back to the booth and back to the third quarter. We got George, Brian, and Melissa, and Dave, and another Dave, and Scott's up there, and he's Gary. I'm Brad. <laughs> anyway, that's our booth. So 10 10, first quarter belonged to Auburn, second quarter belonged to Georgia. Here we go. One thing about that I stuck out to me is Auburn has been handling pretty well the Georgia run game yeah. in this game. Under 60 yards rushing in the first half. And they're going to open up with an empty backfield. So it looks like it's a Carson Beck pass to start things off. And the short throw is complete. And breaking tackles is dealt. Balls and he lost the ball. Balls out, yes. Does Auburn have it? He, they do. One play, one mistake. Two tight ends are split to both sides. Bowers on the right, dealt to the left. Easy pitch and catch, and then on the run, it gets punched out big time. Marcus Ar Harris. Yes, Marcus Harris, number 50. He used to be the oddity, the transfer from Kansas a year ago. Now he's just one of the transfers. Good. And the ball just lying around there for a second or so. Yes, I heard Ronnie Brown at halftime being interviewed on the big uh, screen, and he said, we need another turnover. Yep. I don't think he met the first play <laughs> of the half, but he got it. The long haul American, the great Ronnie Brown being interviewed, he said, I'm happy with the guys, we just need another turnover, I think. And they got it at the 32-yard line. And Robbie Ashford at the controls at quarterback. And he'll keep it. Ashford got the edge inside the 20 and hurdles his way for a big run and a first down. You can really see, again, especially those third and fourth down plays that didn't pick up the first down at the end of the half. And Hugh Freeze loves Ashford in the red zone. He feels he's got more ways to attack this Georgia defense with Ashford in the ground. He ripped off 18 yards to the 14-yard line. So Auburn trying to take advantage of the early turnover on the first snap of the third quarter. Jarquez Hunter inside the 10. What it does with the running quarterback is the edge rushers have to freeze. They have to make sure the handoff is made. It's almost like a triple option. Everybody has to kind of stand still. Where's the ball? Where's the bell? Ooh, he's past me. You can see it really simply on the right side. Warren Brinson, number 97. He couldn't tack the play, the running back, because he wasn't sure the quarterback wasn't going to keep it. And Jarquez has got that blast on takeoff. 
You, you don't make a decision in a hurry. He's got five yards. Now it's Ashford again. And touchdown, Auburn. So they do take advantage of the turnover. And they lead again. How about this nice play calling? Philip Montgomery's the coordinator. Hugh Freeze is involved. Last time, they faked it inside with the quarterback threatening outside. This time, they fake it outside, and the quarterback keeps it inside. Nice package put together for the backup quarterback, Ashford. Nick Pearson's extra point is good. And the first... 90 seconds has electrified this sellout crowd. First Oscar dealt, had the ball punched out by Marcus Harris. Then it was Jacquez Hunter, and then Robbie Ashford. A nine yard touchdown. 17 to 10, Auburn in front. Credit Phil Montgomery, a former Tulsa head coach, the offensive coordinator. Nice series of plays there. It was. And remember, Phil Montgomery was the offensive coordinator when Robert Griffin III won his Heisman at Baylor. So he knows how to run the quarterback. That kick makes it to the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 25 for Georgia's second snap offensively of the third quarter. As we look at our game trends, Auburn quarterbacks. Well, after that rushing touchdown, Robbie Ashford looking pretty good, and there was a 61-yard run by Peyton Thorne before that. Carson Beck, first career road start, an interception that turned into points. And Auburn, four trips in the red zone, two touchdowns and a field goal. They've turned both the interception and the fumble yes. into touchdowns. Right. So now it's going to be interesting, Gary, because we haven't seen Georgia in this situation. Well, we saw them down to South Carolina, but they came back. I think they got to figure out a way to get the ball to Powers. Dejon Edwards, his knee touched down, and he lost the ball. Did the knee come down before? Auburn's got it, but there it is. Coming out of the pile is Elijah know. McAllister. I think his, he slipped on the play and his knee went down is what I saw from up here. Let's see. There's the slip. Did his down. go down? He I, might have saved it with his own hand. I thought his knee touched. I, let's see. Let's take a look. Gene Steratore is with us. His knee's down right there. Yep, just as the yeah, ball you came know, out. Brad, I, I, and I'm thinking if the knee wasn't down, I believe the left forearm was down as well prior to the ball coming loose. I do think we have a graze right there with the right knee at that point. But then if you follow and watch the left arm, I think he still has control of that bar, ball whenever you see that left forearm kind of hit the ground as That's well. A good so I think idea. they will have down by contact. I think there, one guys. of the two is going to keep the ball in George's hands. I agree with you. They apparently avoid disaster, but we'll put it in the eyes of John Allman, the replay official. The folks here at Jordan Hare are starting to see it on the big screen. And Jason Autry is having a look under the and, hood. And the Auburn defense is looking at the replay, and they're on their way out on the field. They think the replay, he had his right knee grazed it, as Ness called it, and his right forearm, as Gene called it. The best thing that could have happened to Dejon Edwards right there is slipping. Yes. So that play was stopped up front, though, by Chester Christian Miller, number 52, and that's what caused the discombobulation by Dejan on that play. So this will have to be reversed because it was called a fumble recovered by Auburn on the field. Here's the call. After video review, the ruling is the runner was down prior to losing possession. It'll be second down for Georgia at the 24-yard line. Well, the folks here aren't going to like it, but it's the right call. Remember when we were talking to Kirby about their offense? Do they play more for Carson Beck, or do they run? Does Carson Beck have to learn the Georgia offense? He said, neither. We got to go to our go-to guys. That's how the offense. And the go-to guy that's not getting the ball is Brock Bowers. Two receptions for nine yards and one running play for three yards. They got to find a way to get the ball to him. Remember, Lad McConkey played in the first series, caught his first pass of the year. I don't believe he's been back out there since. Quick slant, 
and a hit immediately by Jalen Simpson. Jenny. Well, guys, I think Hugh Freeze wrote up a script of exactly how he wanted this second half to start. He told me he needed more turnovers and that they wanted to play aggressive, and that's exactly what we've seen so far out there. Now, offensively, he said look for some quick passes, especially establishing the run game on the perimeter. Looking for them to play aggressive, and it is getting loud down here, guys. I mentioned Lad McConkey. He's in there to the top of your screen. Bowers in the slot the same way. Third down and six. Beck looking left, going that way, and he's got it to McConkey first down. It's a great read by Carson Beck. He wanted to go to Bowers. It was taken away from him, but he's got the one-two. They got their two best players together. Bowers goes out, covered by, and then he waits for McConkey to get the catch. Perfect Beautiful. throw and catch, pickup of 17. Now, full house backfield for Georgia here from the 46 yard line. Quick throw in the flat. Dylan Bell. Bell stiff arms his way into Auburn territory. Mike Bobo thinking players again. Look who he's gone to. When things have gotten rough, he goes to McConkey number one, then he goes over here to Dylan Bell. There's Bobo, the veteran play caller. Pick up six, second down and four. Dejon Edwards, nothing there. Good job by that interior, led by Marcus Harris, who's having quite a ball game. Eugene Asante helped him clean up. And it's third down. You know, usually we're used to these Auburn defenses having those edge rushers that they can't handle the opposing team. So far, that's been one area that Auburn has not been able to produce. One-on-one -on -one wins in the pass rush. Bowers is in on the right side. Here comes a blitz. Back, going to go deep. McConkey can't get there. Covered by D.J. James. Because of the lack of a belief and able to get to the quarterback one-on-one, -on -one, dial up the blitz coming off the left side. The slot, defensive back. Simpson jumps up, distracts the quarterback, but fourth down, they're going for it. Georgia going on. Or at least three. trying to draw him offside. They look to the sideline. No nope. timeout taken by Auburn. I'm surprised Auburn took a timeout here. That's a wasted timeout. No way Georgia was going for it. They were trying to draw him offside. Lad McConkey just that close on the last play. Fourth down coming up. Meanwhile, Georgia's got a fourth down, and Brett Thorson has come in to punt. Auburn sort of a wasted timeout there. On the fourth down. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them. Coy Moore is waiting on Thorson's punch for Auburn. And he's just going to get out of the way. And this one's going to be fielded. Right, touchback, I think, and hand it on the line. Uh, still trying to make a determination. The judge, field judge, and yep. going to say touchback. Yep. Not by much. His momentum carried him into the end zone. You don't like momentum. <laughs> well, How about forward case, progress? Forward progress. <laughs> the ball landed on the line. Second bounce. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm glad we didn't have to get into the whole momentum thing. <laughs> You're the one that brought it on. <laughs> on purpose. I stared right at you. You it's sure like did. Underhand pitch to you. It was. It was softball. <laughs> now it's time for Do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Well, the best project so far has been the running quarterback. First half, it was Peyton Thorne. Cross action, linebacker's eyes are inside. There goes Peyton for 61 yards. Second half, you bring the other quarterback in, but very similar results. Two effective plays running the quarterback. And now it's Auburn at the 20-yard line, and it's Ashford to stay in there. 
Jack was Hunter. A tough yard if he got one. Devon Bullard, the first guy there for Georgia's defense. Auburn only 28 passing yards, but 177 on the ground. They came in averaging 198 on the ground, which is second in the SEC, but they're passing last in the conference. They haven't needed it right now. They still lead by a touchdown. They'll try to pass here because Thorne's back in. Ball up in the air. Tipped incomplete. So here's a problem for this Auburn offense. At this stage of this rebuild right here, the third down offense, which where they are right now, is not there. Last week against Texas A&M, 3 for 15. So far in the game, 0 for, 0 for 6. 6. And we'll see if it's 0 for 7 or if they can pick this one up third down and 9. They're going to run the ball, punt, or they're going to take a chance down here. Thorne, he's going to run it himself, and he's got the first down and a lot more. Out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So the Georgia pass, the Georgia pass rush did the one fundamental you're not supposed to do, rush past the quarterback. Watch all four of them go right past the quarterback and allow the first down run by an offense that is struggling on third and long. And on third and nine, they got 17 from number one. He's going to have a 100-yard rushing day the way things are going. He's had one of those already this year. Fundamental number one in the pass rush. Do not pass that quarterback. Now it's Jacquez Hunter back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Well, there's been number one teams that have left here not number one. Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Alabama. And those... Back to back, almost back to back games that we did. First, they picked off Georgia, who was number one. Alabama switched into that spot and they got them. Now, Georgia got them back in the SEC championship game. Nonetheless, there's history here in the 128th meeting between these two. And again, Peyton Thorne on the keep. And again, a first down. So, this is really a good series for Peyton Thorne. The question marks about Peyton Thorne. And it was all over the fan base for Auburn. Was he tough enough to play SEC football? And I think in this game, he's showing up for this football game. That's the only thing you can do is they're going to get criticized. You just got to stand up and do it. And he is. Got 12 more yards. Now he goes to the air. A rare completion to his tight end, Fairweather. It's funny. Nobody ever hears it all going on. But they hear it. Listen, you know, it's there. Oh, I didn't listen. I didn't listen. But you hear it. And I think Peyton Thorne heard the criticism of him. And I think he's showing up and competitively playing a good game. Yeah. And his teammates talking with us yesterday, they said, yeah, we know. <laughs> you have to live in a cave to right. not hear it, you know. But he's playing well on this drive. When you drive around your car, it's hard not to find a talk show about <laughs> SEC football. That's <laughs> true. Betty in the lineup. With Thorne. Gives it off to him. He's got a first down again. You know what you love about Petit is he looks like the scat back that wants to go wide and run in space, but he's effective running the ball inside. That offensive line gets good push inside. Good job that time pushing out and moving the pile from Georgia. Georgia is getting pushed around on this drive right now. Uh, Avery Jones, the center that time, did a great job reaching and filling up in that hole. At the 36, another Auburn first down, and it's going to be quarterback draw. Thorne trying to get to the edge. He's going to be run out of bounds after a game of a lot of yard. Malachi Starks got a little bit of a break here and give us a chance to test your knowledge a little bit with our Aflac trivia question, which is which football coach was a head coach in the same sport at both Georgia and Auburn? All right. Good, good luck Google on that one, everybody. <laughs> Second down and nine. Thorne got a yard. And now the backfield empties as Batie comes out. Three receivers to the near side for Peyton Thorne. And he might not have time to find any of them. He won't. Going to be sacked by Smile Munden. 
Well, that's what you love about Smile Munden, Dumas Johnson, 10 and number two. They both are effective off the edge. And this time he comes around, nobody has him. It's one on one the whole way. And the quarterback, Thorne, is not going to get away from him. A lot of speed at those linebacker positions for Georgia. They always have been. These guys are no different. But this situation's a little different. Third down and 16. On the last third down and nine, they got a 17 yard run by the quarterback. Extra man on the rush, the pass, a back shoulder beauty. Or is he out of bounds? They didn't catch it anyway. Malcolm Johnson couldn't hold it. So that's one of those times where you're looking for your receivers to make that play. That one on one winning play to help out the offense. And nice job punching that ball through that time by Everett. Dalen. I think he punched it out, didn't he? he? Did. Yes, he did. Dalen Everett, the right hand right in the right spot. Yes, because I think that would have been caught as perfect back shoulder throw, and Everett makes the winning play. And the guy that tried to pull in the catch is still down. I really like to call that time. It was a blitz by Georgia. They went one on one and got rid of the ball fast, almost got the first down. You know, good call, good delivery pass, would have been caught, and the defense makes a good play. So, Auburn set to punt on fourth and long. That means Oscar Chapman. By the way, Oscar's punt to end the first half. They say it was touched at the four-yard line, so it goes in the books as a 71-yard punt, not 74. Well, he'd like to have one inside the 10. And that's what he's aiming for on the far side, end-over-end end job. And bounces, and that's even better than inside the 10. Down to the two. So Georgia in a hole. And in a hole on the scoreboard, 17 to 10. Let's take a look at our four game changer. Well, it's been rush defense by this Auburn defense, and it's been led inside by Marcus Harris, number 50. He's been making plays, punching balls out. He's been the guy so far that's been the difference, at least one of the difference makers on that defense. And now the crowd will really get into it with Georgia deep in their own territory. Right there. Carson back in the shotgun. The hand off. Dejon Edwards. And he blasts his way for about 18 yards. That'll give him some room to work. Yeah, that's offensive line. You know, struggling through injuries. Right tackle's been a problem. They've had to switch around. Truss has gone to right tackle. They've got Michael Morris now, number 56 in it, left guard. Two different guards have played there. They're going through the whole depth chart in the offensive line. Kendall Milton gives Dejon Edwards a breather. It's a quick wide out screen. Trying everything to get it to Bowers, and all he did was lose a couple. Well, they sure have circled this Auburn defense, Brock Bowers, haven't they? Yeah. Two men covering him when they missed passes early, and when he catches a short pass, he's had no yards after catch, which has been his mainstay this season so far. He had about 110 after the catches last week. Absolutely. 259 yards total receiving yards coming into the game. 219 were after the catch. And that last one was a minus two after the catch. Back. Going to run with it. Gets what he can and slides his way out of bounds to bring up a third down and about five. Positive play. Put Brock Bowers on the wheel there. Nothing there. Make it third and short. Or third and medium in this case. Last time they blitzed in this situation. Will they go four-man rush or will they come after him again? Third down and five from the 23. Looks like four. No corner cap. Here comes an edge. Beck got rid of it in that direction and completes it. And a first down to Ra Ra Thomas. So in college football, the first thing you have to know as a quarterback with the wide hashes, that corner is always a potential rusher. 
comes off the corner. Beck and Daylon Johnson are ready for it. Produces the first down. And Ra Ra Thomas hurt his ankle, I think, after making the catch. Came up limping on the sideline. And we've got an Auburn guy down, Messiah Asile Kite. Hey, I guess is okay. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. Watch him in the middle of the screen right here. Looks over the bench, gets the signal that he should go down, and uh, I think we'll get him back in the game, don't you, Ness? <laughs> I think he'll be okay. Oh, that was a knockout punch. Rara is the guy that I think legitimately got hurt after that catch and came up limping. He did go in the Injury 10 on Georgia's sideline, but trotted back out of it to join his teammates in the huddle. So first down, Georgia. Carson back. And almost intercepted. Well, Jalen McLeod came around the edge that time and hit him. Carson Beck just as he let that thing go. Watch number 35 come right off the edge and make that play. Oh, he stretches out his hands like he's diving in a pool. And Beck, lucky that it yes, was an interception was. number two. So Georgia already with turnover problems today that have turned into 14 Auburn points and almost had another one right there. Beal hosts the craziest game of bingo you're ever going to see where players can win up to a million dollars. It's time to play Lotiana Loca Monday after the Price is Right night on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. Second down and 10, Georgia. Powers right there. Going the other way back, trying to get out of trouble and got back to the line of scrimmage. And Eugene Asante brings him down. It's third down. Georgia started this drive at the two yard line. Guess who's back in the game? <laughs> you see the key tech. I'm sure he is. So the last two third down plays, Auburn has blitzed the quarterback. Will they do it again? Again, McConkey and Bowers, the two best receivers for Georgia, are up to the top of your screen. Carson Beck's looking that way. Throws that way, completes it to Lank McCocky that way. First See, that, down, Georgia. That's the problem with the four man rush. This is the difference that we're not used to seeing at Auburn. Usually they've got a front four that can terrorize the quarterback. Only rush four here, stoned by that offensive line, and McConkey makes the play. Two very similar routes for McConkey, both first downs, and that's Dejan Edwards going to work on the ground. He almost lost the ball again, but. Going to be close to a first down, or does he have it? Basically, is the you know staple of the Georgia offense for years the toss sweep only out of shotgun. They do it just a little different nowadays. Same blocking. We got another Auburn player down. This time it's Marcus Harris. We can't afford to lose him. Oh, he's had a whale of a game. And actually, Elijah McAllister might be down too. I think. Well, both Auburn players that were down are up. That's Marcus Harris being helped to the Auburn sideline. Probably had as good a game as anybody. Yeah, that's a big loss for this Auburn defense. That guy doesn't go out of the game unless he's hurt. As compared to some others, is that what you think? Well, modern medicine is one thing, but I, I don't <laughs> think it had much effect on number 33. <laughs> he's been in on a lot of tackles, and he was part of that one as well. Right there. And trying to rip the ball out. Meanwhile, Georgia has a second down and a yard. Ninth play of the drive coming up that started at the two yard line. And has worked its way to the 41 of Auburn. Delp, the tight end in motion. Back off play action. Down the middle on the run. Brock Bowers. Bowers. Finally, they get it to number 19 in a little bit of space. And this time they tucked him into the tight end position right here. Delp comes behind him. But watch, play action pass. That's what Georgia loves to do. If they can run the ball a little bit, then they go to the play action pass game. 29 yard pickup. Now it's number 30 on the ground. Dejon Edwards, touchdown, Georgia. That's Georgia football right there. Play action pass, toss sweep.
They used to do it from the I formation. You can name all the backs. Now they do it a little bit different. And a great cutback. And a 98-yard touchdown march. And I'll tell you, number 19 doesn't just catch the ball. He got the key block. He blocked the end man on the line of scrimmage so that Dejan could get outside. Peyton Woodring for the point after to try to tie it up. And it's up and good. A minute and three seconds remaining, third quarter. Georgia just took it the length of the field. Bowers with a big play. Dejon Edwards scoring. And it's all even except. Remember this drive started on the two yard line. Got out to midfield, then they went play action pass. McConkey had a couple receptions, two third down conversions, and then set up that that guy does just not catch passes. Watch on the touchdown. He's the one with the key block on the edge. Turns it in, fights through it, turns his body around, and Dejan takes it into the end zone. So Peyton Thorne. And the Auburn offense, it's their turn now from the 25. Brian Batte with him in the backfield. That's Jay Fair in motion. And the throw. Complete to Fair. Nice pickup. The second down. A little earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question, which was, which football coach was a head coach in the same sport at both Georgia and Auburn? Shug Jordan. Basketball, though. See, it was a he trick. Total curveball. Told you, Google did no help on that one. There's Shug. Pick up a five, second down and five. Got away from the first wave. And he's going to be close to the first down as Bullard brought him down about a yard and a half shy of the first. Yeah, natural runner, jump cut, making the play. It's one on one in the hole. Makes a miss. That might bring our third quarter to a close as Peyton Thorne calmly puts his mouth guard up in his helmet. Everybody's going to hold up four fingers, I'm sure, including. The 88,000 that are at Jordan Hare Stadium. And there they are. That ends three. Deep South's oldest rivalry is going to come down to 15 minutes. The 128th edition deadlines at the end of three. Georgia, the second. The third quarter was a draw. And now the Home Depot SEC on CBS heads into the fourth and final stanza. Tied at 17. Robbie Ashford back in at quarterback for Hugh Freeze and the Auburn offense. Third down and one. Georgia just had a long drive. They can't go three and out. Only one third down conversion today for Auburn. The give is Hunter hitting the backfield. Hit again. He's not going to get anywhere near the first down marker. Well, late flag flag. Late from flag. the secondary. Big call. I'd say. Jason Audrey will give it to us. Holding offense number 84. Up in this decline. He's open play his fourth down. So holding call on Auburn declined. And his fourth down. So they brought in the running quarterback that time. No cross action, just a sweep out of shotgun. The short yarded shotgun package on, has not been working for Auburn. Oscar Chapman to Pontagan for Auburn. And 
Makai Muse waits around the 30 for Georgia. He's got one punt return for a touchdown Beautiful already punt. this year. Has to backpedal, and he dropped the ball, trying to get on it inside the 10. He does, but he lost about 10 yards or so by bottling it. It's got to be close to a 65-yard punt, doesn't it? Wonderful play. 61 yards this time, 71 earlier. That one had him backpedaling so far he couldn't handle the catch. But he did get on top of it, and now Georgia's in a hole to start with their offense. It is, but remember last time they started on the two-yard line, a long drive. This Auburn defense has to be careful not to get gassed right now. This is where you start looking at the number of plays you guys are out there for. So this one's easy. It's only the nine. That's right. Full offense is available. Marcus Harris, by the way, is back in there for the Auburn defense. Beck, off play action. Throws complete to Bowers again. Brock Bowers trying to drag him down. He's all the way out to the 45-yard line. So here's what happens. If you're a quarterback, that throw, remember early in the game when he got hit Carson Beck? You earn the confidence of the play caller. They call a play like this on first down. But this is Georgia's M.O. Over half of their passes are thrown on first down coming into this game. I couldn't believe that when you showed me that stat. 75 out of 148 passes were thrown on first down. They come back to a first down pass. And Auburn's got a player down. This one coming back. I didn't see the flag, but there was one. I don't see a flag. Was there a fumble on the play? Oh, they're ruling a fumble. I didn't yes. see that either. Well, he was under about three guys. Then we'll take another look. Oh, he's the... down. His head was down. Yeah, he's down. That's not going to be a fumble. It's not, I don't still know what it, I don't know what it is. It's still not out. It's not a fumble. I don't know what else. It oh, is. There's the there's the thievery down in the bottom of the yeah. pile, but that's long over. Yeah. You know why you just not seeing those fumbles as good as before? Because there wasn't a fumble. Well, I didn't think so. <laughs> the guy that's down is Jalen Simpson. And I think Kirby is saying, are you kidding me? Yeah. What was the fumble about? Here's the call. After video review, the runner had possession of the ball and was down. It'll be first down Georgia at the 46-yard line. So what a play call again by Mike Bova. Coming off the goal line, a young quarterback on the road has earned the trust of his staff, and they go to number 19 again. Remember the last drive. They set it up with the play-action pass, then the pass, the pitch, and then the toss for the touchdown. Now they start with the play-action pass. And then Bowers does the rest on a 37-yard pickup. And goes down at the 46-yard line, where it's first down for the Dogs. So if you're Ron Roberts, a defensive coordinator for Auburn, you've tried just about everything. How do you slow these guys down now? This is Cash. Jones for a couple and Jenny talked to Kirby Smart during the last break. Coach, it's been a back and forth battle, but your team has remained composed. How do you finish this one off? Well, you run the ball and you stop the run. We're running the ball, but we're not really stopping the run. Okay, we got to force them and uh, get the ball back for our offense. Try to stay in rhythm. Can't turn the ball over. Thank you, Coach. They haven't given up. Over 200 yards rushing in five years they have today. But right now their offense is back out there, and let's see if they keep running the ball. Dejon Edwards in the backfield with Carson Beck, getting some instruction from his quarterback. Beck to throw it. And he's going to go long sideline. Bowers got one hand on it, but that's all. You talked about the last time Georgia gave up over 200 yards rushing. We were there, 2018 LSU. Joe Burrow's first year, Coach O's first big win. That's what Hugh Freeze is trying to do today. Yes, indeed. Now the crowd really coming to life. A third wall. And what do you do again? You're Ron Roberts calling defensive signals. The four-man rush has not been able to put pressure on the quarterback. 
Lad McConkey is back in there again. He's been a favorite of Beck on these kind of situations. He's at the bottom of your screen on third down and eight. Beck, deep middle, got it to Bowers. What a throw and catch to the 25-yard line. So this was not a perfect throw, but it ended up being a back shoulder throw in the middle of the field. Bowers adjusts to the throw, comes back and makes a, a right-handed catch. What a catch. Pick up a 22. And now at the play fake. Another one oh, again. And it's Bowers again to the 10-yard line. I'm not quite sure how he tucked that one in there. Well, we wondered when they would go to Bowers. They're going to Bowers. Got a penalty marker back around the 25-yard line. He is a hoss. He's a clutch Illegal football touching. player, too. Offense number 19. He's covered in the formation. His first to touch the ball downfield. It's a five-yard penalty with loss of down. It'll be second down. So that one's coming back. Yes, the uh, outside receiver was on the line of scrimmage, and either Brock had to be off or the receiver had to be off. He was declared ineligible because this player is on the line of scrimmage, and there's where Brock is. It's a good call. So Only three men in the backfield for Georgia. You're allowed to have four. Instead of uh, first down at the 10, first and goals back at the 30. So a great catch. It doesn't even turn out to be a catch. Nope. Still could be a highlight reel. They're going to flare it out. McConkey low ball. Got it somehow and picked up about four. Just, we just saw the one that didn't count. Ness, this is the one that did count. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty. Both of them were one-handed. Another third and long. Third and almost 12. Empty backfield. Man-to-man -man all across the board. No free safety. Carson Beck should recognize it. Nobody in the middle of the field. They're coming after him. Here they come. Back, quick throw to the outside, completes it to Dominique Lovett, but it's still fourth down. Fourth down and about four. Peyton Woodring is a freshman. He's missed a couple of kicks this year. This would be his biggest make if he knocks this through. A 38-yard field goal attempt. He made one from 37 a little bit earlier. The freshman to try to give the dogs the lead. Kick on the way, and it's a beauty. Woodring from 38 yards out. Georgia inches ahead. Auburn will have the ball. And 11 minutes to go. 11 minutes, buddy, and this is uh, Georgia's first lead. Here we go. First lead, and now the question is, can the Auburn offense that's been effective do it with a little more pass when they throw the ball for under 50 yards down from behind? Do they still run the ball? Kirby said, we're going to stop the run. Right. We will see. Well, we'll see. That's what he told Jenny. We had to stop the run, and then we got to run the rock. And it all comes down now. Peyton Thorne is getting ready to come out, apparently to lead the Auburn offense. We'll wait and see. We might see both quarterbacks again. Georgia was down by 10. They battled back to tie things up. Auburn regained the lead. Georgia comes back and ties. And now they have a three-point advantage here in the fourth quarter. And Auburn's going to run it back again. This is a big fella out of the backfield, Sean Jackson. And he gets it out to about the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Jenny. Some updates for the Tigers. It appears that Jalen Simpson has injured his right leg. They are working on him on the sideline. Wide receiver Malkin Johnson, he got hurt with 530 left in the third. He has been in the locker room ever since. Elijah McAllister and Marcus Harris, guys, they have both been back in the game, so clearly good to go there. All right, Jenny, thanks. Jalen Simpson was involved in that tackle on Brock Bowers, and that's how he got tangled up. He's trying to work that leg out, as Jenny said. Meanwhile, his offense on the field from the 25. It was an empty backfield, and it's going to stay that way for Peyton Thorne. Not for long. Not for long. Here comes Betty, and he might flip it out to him. 
Nope, it's going to go across the middle to Fair. And Fair out to the 29. You never want to understand how stressed this pass offense is for Auburn as you look at how Kirby is at that 21 straight win on the line right now. But in their two power five games against Cal and AM, the long pass play against Cal, 28 yards. Against AM, 13 yards. Today, 14 yards. Yep. They keep it on the ground here. That T, and he's got a first down. Taki Smith made the tackle. Throw on the tape, and this guy stands out to T, number 21. He's quick, he cuts. Oh, that was like a nice double cut. I thought he was going to come inside from watching it, the replay. He was an All American as a kick returner. USF. They haven't gone to the tight end. He's in motion no, right now. Fairweather. And Thorne going deep the other way. It's going to be interference. 15 yards. It's a smart 15 yards, though, that time. Tyke Smith was a guilty party. So obviously in the NFL, it's a spot foul that's about a 35-yard gain, but it's a 15-yard penalty in college. Don't take any chances. If you think you're beat, do that arm bar. Pass interference, defense number 23. The 15-yard penalty was a previous spot. It's about a think, first down. I think he got a gra grab at the jersey there. I think that's what happened. Nike it was a freshman All-American at West Virginia, an All-American as a sophomore. Injury problems since his arrival at Georgia. Now this year blossoming with three interceptions and has really played well. And Gary said if there's a smart penalty, that one wasn't too bad. Only the third penalty against Georgia. Jack Jarquez Hunter back in the backfield on the toss sweep. And he's met head on and going nowhere. As Warren Brinson was the first guy to get there. From Barcelona and PSG to Man City and Man United. The UEFA Champions League is the biggest tournament in club soccer. Matches continue Tuesday and Wednesday. Streaming on Paramount Plus. Aria, who had a perfect flight in here to burst the Georgia bubble balloon out at midfield and that's what the team is trying to do right now to the number one team in the country. But now they're playing from behind for the first time. Ashford going to flare it out. Got it to Batty and down the sideline. He had not a lot of room to work. He is he made, quick isn't he? Yeah he made something out of that one. Good throw by Ashford comes in there. George is expecting the run obviously. Cross him up, delivers it, so the running back can run with it after the catch. And he almost got around that corner. Yep. Now they come back in with Peyton Thorne. So rotating quarterbacks all day long. But it is third, and they've only got one all day, and that was on a quarterback scramble. One conversion. Third down and four here. Thorn throws complete. There's a completion, and there's the tight end for the first time. Fairweather, and he's got a first down. So the word all week was, Peyton, get the ball out. Get the ball out. It was ringing in his ears, and he got the ball out on time. Simplified the routes a little bit, too. Not as many option routes, so the quarterback could anticipate more throws. He didn't have to figure out where his receiver was going like the previous games. That helps the receivers too. You can run with more conviction when you don't have to read things on the go. Remember, Auburn got 14 of their 17 points off Georgia turnovers, and Georgia is thinking they'd like to return that favor. And so far, they haven't been able to get it out of there. But T again. You know, we're talking about can a running team win it? Well, there's the guys that have thrown the ball to beat them. Now, Joe Burrow beat him in 18 his first year to set up that 219 magical season when they ran for over 200. But most of the time, the Georgia defense has been beaten by an elite quarterback. An NFL quarterback in case yeah. of all those guys. And C.J. Stroud's not doing too bad right now. That's right. And he came close. Did he catch that? No, nope, not I don't quite. Think so. Dalen Everett was there. Fairweather was the attentive receiver again. 
The tall guy, give him a shot. 50 50 ball, and everybody's That's, all tangled I'll up. I tell you, Dalen Everett has had a really good football game. Remember, he knocked that one out down the sideline yep. on Johnson, and he's playing perfect coverage again, keeps his eye on the ball the whole way. Not going to get it. Thorne was looking for a flag. Now they mixed it up, run and pass on this drive. They did, but that was an interesting call, the fade pass on second and medium. Now it's third and medium. A lot tougher. They're coming after him. They have to get to the 22. Not going to get there. It's Fairweather again, but he's going to draw a pack of dogs. So the forward progress got him to about the 24, I believe. I think he's going to get the ball to about the 24, and of course, Alex McPherson's coming out. Hugh Freeze will tie the game and put the pressure back on Georgia, the number one team on the road. Should they make the field goal? McPherson, one for one today. He has made 10 straight, and this one from 42 yards out. On the way. Got it. Snuck it in. Alex McPherson from 42 yards. We're tied again. That was the first drive that it was tilted to the pass. Five, eight play drive. Five of them were passes. As you see the fans behind the goalpost, wait till the last second to stand up and cheer. It's good. Tie game. Don't forget before we're done the play of the game. Be presented by Jersey Mike Subs. There have been a lot of big ones. Let's see who's going to make one more play in the final 621 of regulation. Muse will let it go, and Georgia will come out to the 25. So in the third quarter, we were talking about how does Georgia get the ball to Bowers, right? Yep. They did. So now you got to talk about how does Auburn keep the ball away from Bowers and force Carson Beck to go somewhere else with it. The last loss was a long time ago. It was to Alabama in the SEC title game. Now it's Carson Beck. His first road start at Jordan Hare, where it's getting loud. On first down, crossing route, Cash Jones, short game. Got about three. Eugene Asante on the tackle. Will be under six minutes on the next snap. Another first down pass, well executed. Drive start, five yards. Dejon Edwards back in, and now it's a full backfield, including Brock Bowers on second and seven. Play action bootleg. Throw on the run in some traffic that was, and completes. That was his first dangerous one. That's when you put it all on your shoulders. They took away Dylan Bell. They took away Brock Bowers on the play. Nobody to go to on it. Comes back, throws across his body. Could you hear everybody yelling? If that one didn't work. <laughs> well, he got it to Rosemary Jack Saints. Nice catch by number one. And a first down. When you play that position, or sooner or later, you got to make a couple of those throws where everybody goes, no, no. And goes, yes, yes. Dejan not going anywhere this time. Nice job by the Auburn defense. Led by Larry Nixon. Yeah, it was stuffed up well. Nowhere to go. When he tried to cut back, Larry Nixon was patient and stayed. Watch. Left side of that defensive line stuffs it, and there he is, the linebacker waiting for the cutback, and he got it. Asante got a piece of that, too, and it forces second down and long. Nixon against Texas A&M played every snap in the game. Under four and a half in regulation. Man-to-man -man look again. Empty backfield. Carson Beck all by his lonesome. Set to throw and batted in the air incomplete. Marcus Harris 
with a big paw. Man to man across the field. And Marcus Harris getting blocked well. But know it when you can't get to him, start jumping. You might have seen Kirby Smart in the background of that replay looking at Carson Beck and giving him two thumbs up as if to say, this is the play you gotta make right here. This is what Carson Beck has been waiting for for two years to have this offense and the Georgia team on his back. Third and 12. Beck, they give him time. He delivers to Brock Bowers. Who else? First down, these, Georgia. A lot of these guys wonder, why didn't Carson Beck transfer? He could have left, gone somewhere else, and started young. He wanted to play here with this football team, and he made the big throw under pressure. Pickup of 16. And again, it's number 19 doing it. Great protection, great throw to a great football player. That's the combination. Jalen McLeod is the injured party for Auburn. But a big pickup on third and 12 for Georgia. Early next Saturday, SEC on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. On third down and 12, a 16 yard pickup. Everybody did their job for Georgia. Clean pocket, good route. Perfect throw. First half, Brock Bowers, two catches, nine yards. Now, eight catches, 127, 120 yards. Dodge from the Tiger, 39. And Beck's going to keep it. And that was not a called quarterback draw. The receivers were thinking they were going to get the football. Beck just pulled out of that play quickly. Didn't like what he had. Not sure what spooked him. Could have gone to Bowers short. Maybe he was looking left to begin with, but he got back near the line of scrimmage. Lost a yard, we'll call it. Second down at 11. Approaching the three-minute mark. Fourth quarter, tied at 20. Beck, plenty of time. Down the middle, guess who? Brock Bowers, Bowers heading to the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Well, you got to wonder how somebody can get that open when he's so important to the offense. 40 yards on the run and catch for the All-American and Mackey Award winner a year ago. No surprise. Go to your best players. Simple square and watch how open he is. Can't get any more open than that. And then those yards after the catch. That's the trademark that this guy has once he gets the football. You think you're going to arm tackle him. No you way. Can forget about yep. it. He's running a 4 5 40, and he's 235 pounds. What a drive by Georgia. 75 yards and seven plays. Woodring's extra point is good. And what an answer for Carson Beck. Remember, he started off the game with that interception. But on that drive, he came through. Brock Bowers up to 160 yards receiving. More importantly, the touchdown of 40 yards with a pitch and catch. Carson Beck, a defining drive maybe for him if Georgia can hold on to this lead. Gonna get lunch. Brock Bowers career high in any half 148 yards and currently a 40 yard touchdown that's given Georgia the lead. Uh, Carson Beck's a smart man standing under next to number 19. <laughs> Carson Beck had 77 passing yards at halftime and has put on a display when Georgia desperately needed it on that last drive that covered 75 yards. The little sneaky play to start the drive, a five yard pass. He knew he had pressure, got rid of it, got it to be second and five. Then the key third down play. Everybody does their job here. First down throw to Brock Bowers, and then to tap it off. I don't know, almost a busted coverage for this Auburn football team. Get Bowers in space and can't stop this guy in space. And Ness, you know I hate to do this kind of stuff this early, but if Georgia goes on to finish this season, if they're going to finally not vote for a quarterback for the Heisman, would somebody please vote for Brock Bowers? <laughs> I for hear two, you. For two straight years, he's been amazing. 
Peyton Thorne in and out of the hands of Jarquez Hunter. Couldn't quite find the handle. This game's still alive, though. And now he's tied A.J. Green for number two all-time in career receiving touchdowns at Georgia with that last one. So they've only had Auburn going into this drive a total of 66 yards throwing. Under three minutes to go. Auburn How they used one move? of their timeouts. Yep, two left just. Second down and ten. Fairweather, the tight end, on the move. Thorne down the middle and got it to Fairweather. Now remember, Auburn will have to hurry here. The clock will keep running. New rules this year. It does not stop for a first down. Not until two minutes and under. Beautiful throw and catch. Sure was. Empty backfield pickup of 22. Five receiver group for Peyton Thorne with 220 left in the fourth quarter. Thorne going to run it here. And got away from one, but not the second. Smile Munden brings him down. Yeah, saves time because keeping him from get out of bounds. Boy, that the previous play, that one had to be fitted in. Best throw of the day. Maybe the best throw of the year by Peyton Thorne. Second down and nine as we worked our way under two minutes. So now the clock will stop on first downs temporarily. And calling plays. You got four downs. Remember that all the time. And just outside their own 48. The throw incomplete behind the intended receiver who was Nick Mardner. A lot at stake. A lot of streaks for Georgia. But of course their number one ranking. They've won six straight against Auburn. And Auburn's had four home wins against number one teams. And number one has had their hands full all day long. Peyton Ford was upset the receiver did not see the back shoulder throw. He threw it exactly where he wanted to. Third down and nine. Georgia's going to bring the heat. Thorne got rid of it. Incomplete. Skips off the hands of Jay Fair, his intended receiver. And Auburn's down to a fourth down. Keep your composure. Peyton Thorne getting a little frustrated with his receivers. Throws another good ball. Goes right through the hands. Now fourth and nine instead of maybe fourth and three. Jay Fair is his most dependable receiver for Hugh Freeze. This might be the ball game right here. Fourth and nine. Will Georgia bring some heat or are they going to back out of it? They did the last two times. The most they're going to bring is five. It's going to cost them a timeout. And they're down to one. We'll be back in 30 seconds with 138 left in regulation. And bring you the day's best highlights on the U.S. Army postgame show. That postgame might be in a minute and 38 seconds, or it might be in longer than that. You know, in the past couple of years, Georgia had those NFL defensive linemen and edge rushers that could make a play. Now it seems like they're having to bring in an extra guy to put pressure on the quarterback. Auburn's one out of two on fourth down today. This is fourth and nine. Best pass rushers right there, Michael Williams. Thorne throws late, intercepted by Georgia. Going the other way is Malachi Starks, and that should do it. Fourth down, you have to throw it. I don't know if the receiver stumbled or he was adjusting to the ball, trying to come back. Let's see what happened. Second interception of the season for Malachi Starks. Here's another look. Peyton Thorne's going to roll to his left. What happens here? Yeah, just didn't, couldn't keep his footing on that play. Went right over his head to Malachi. And Starks just outfought Jay Fair for that football. He did. Jay Fair was in front of him, but Starks beat him to the football. Again, that is not a, on the quarterback. You throw the ball and you think your guy's in front, he's going to stay in front. Right. Georgia will line up in a victory formation here. Carson Beck takes a knee. 
Q Freeze got his football team close in this game. But down the stretch. Frustration showing in the final seconds. As George is going to avoid an upset at Jordan Hare Stadium. It's, it's just me, but I got to say that that's the ball I would have thrown to. I would have thrown to that post up receiver saying, I might get pass interference, or at least I'm going to fight for that catch. Fair slips or falls or gets pushed down, whatever you want to call it, but ends up being intercepted. Beck will take a knee again. And boy, he's coming away with a gigantic win in his first road game as a starter. And he can thank number 19 for helping him along the way. McLeod and Brock Bowers. You're a you dude. You're a, McLeod just said, you're a dude, man. <laughs> well, Kirby and Hugh with a handshake. And you could tell. Kirby kind of exhausted with a big exhale before he meets the Auburn coach at midfield because this was this was an escape. So Q Freeze said to Jenny that my guys will fight all 60 minutes. They did. They did. Absolutely. And I think Q Freeze says these guys will play and he's got something to sell. This is a year of building his roster going forward. I think he's got something to build on. They came to play today. That's for sure. And while they did not play well against Texas A&M on the road last week, they played like Auburn seems to always play at home here today.